I used to work at Domino's. They close at 3 a.m. on weekends, and being that I was taking an off year during college at the time of the story, my boss took advantage of that and always threw me on the 9 p.m. to 3 a.m. shifts. There would always be at least three people working that late, one to cook the pizzas, one to take orders, and one to do any needed deliveries. This night, the one cooking the pizzas was Cole, a 28 years old Italian guy who worked two jobs. He was always in a bad mood, so when he told me to deliver something, I did it without complaints. So, being a Saturday night, it wasn't uncommon to get calls for deliveries past 2 a.m. Around 2.30, I was told to deliver two pizzas to an address that I still vaguely remember, 27, Crocker Drive or something close to that. I took my stupid beat-up 2002 Honda Civic up the road for five minutes, the only main road that cuts through our tiny town. I live in the Manchester Township area in Jersey, containing a whole lot of nothing but trees everywhere. I drove there, and it was dark. After merging off the main road onto smaller roads with no streetlights, the only light that could be seen for miles were my headlights. I turned off the public road onto a dirt road with a private property sign posted outside. It seemed I had arrived at the house I was delivering to, and suddenly, I heard a bang reverberating through my car, followed by a weakened sense of handling of my car as well as a repeating flopping sound. I knew for certain I had just gotten a flat tire. I stopped the car at once and got out to confirm the front right tire was completely flat. I could see through the headlights that the house was walking distance from my car, though, so instead of calling my insurance company, it would make more sense to deliver the pizza and also ask that person for help. I got to the deck of the house. It was an average-sized house, completely enclosed by trees as were most of the houses around here. The lights were on inside, but all the blinds were shut. I rang the bell and quickly a normal-looking young man answered the door. Before exchanging the pizzas for money, I told the man about the predicament I had just found myself in. A look of concern came over his face as he handed me the money and I handed him the pizzas. He came outside to take a look at my car with me. It was a 30-second walk from the house. He got to my car and started analyzing the tire. He said he could help me, he just needed his tools from inside. I started questioning what I could have hit on his dirt driveway and he yelled out to me, don't worry about it, as I was walking. Down his road, I walked a bit further, kind of ignoring him when I noticed a spike strip in the road. It was a very small one, but undoubtedly, that was what I had hit. I couldn't see any other reason for that to be there other than him putting it there deliberately. I started thinking over the possibilities of what could be going down, so I pretended I didn't see the spike strip and walked back, saying I didn't find anything. He looked at me, I was worried he might have been suspicious, but then he turned away and said he was going inside to get some tools. God only knows what he meant by tools. I waited for him to get to his front door before I got back in my car, turned it on, and threw it in reverse. I was not sticking around there to find out what he was doing. I heard the flat tire wobble on the dirt road as my car slowly rolled in reverse. I made a point of avoiding the spike strip this time. My car pulled out of the private dirt road onto the concrete road. I took one last look down the man's driveway to make sure he wasn't following me, then I took off. I couldn't drive too fast though, and risk damaging my wheel. I stayed at a steady 10 to 15 miles per hour. I looked in my rearview mirror and saw something behind my car, the man running after it. I had no choice but to step on it, forcing me to cringe as I could literally feel the damage being done to my wheel. The distance between my car and the man got greater until he was out of sight. After turning back onto the one main road that I had mentioned earlier, 
I slowed down the speed a little bit back to 10 to 15. It was a long ride back, about 20 minutes, since I had to drive slowly. When I got back, the police would be closing in 10 minutes, but I had to return the Domino's sign that they make us put on our cars when doing deliveries. Cole was upset with me for taking so long until I told him the whole story. The woman who was also working the same shift as us listened in with a look of shock on her face the whole time. When it was time to close, Cole told me I should just drive home slowly since I live like down the block and that I should take care of it tomorrow. The two went off to their cars and drove away. I sat in my car for a little bit thinking. Eventually, I turned my car on and started my slow drive back to my house. I noticed, however, that a car without its lights on was following close behind me for a while. So I pulled over in front of some small house to see if they would do the same. The car passed me but then pulled over on the same side of the street a little further down. I started to panic, knowing it had to be the man who figured that he'd find me at the Domino's that he ordered from. I couldn't lead him to my house. So even though I didn't know for certain if it was him, I had to be overly paranoid and call the cops. I had police come to my exact location for fear of being followed. After five to ten minutes of waiting, a cop car slowly rolled down the street, and I beeped my horn to stop him. He stopped and reversed so that his windows were lined up with mine, and then we both rolled them down. I pointed at the car in front of me with its lights off, sitting a little further in front of me, but just then, that car zoomed out from its parked position, lights still off, instantly disappearing down the road into the night. The cop put his lights on and sped after him without saying a word. I didn't know if he wanted me to follow him, but I couldn't with my tire, so I drove home as quick as I could and parked my car in the driveway. I still don't know if that cop caught that driver, somehow I doubt it but I like to imagine he did. Either way, I always made sure to watch my back every time I drove home after that night, and I quit that job two months later. I used to deliver food on the weekends for DoorDash, Grubhub, and Uber Eats for some extra money when I was able to find the motivation. I used to run all three apps simultaneously, as it really helped me stay more efficient at making the most money, as I had more orders I could pick and choose from. One night, I was delivering, it had to have been a Saturday. I got an order from my DoorDash app for a delivery that said it was only like 10 miles away, and it was an $11 order, which was really good for my area, so I just accepted it without thinking much. It was rather dark when I got there, so when I pulled into the driveway, I parked my car at the end, and I left my car's headlights on to help me see. I knocked on the door and waited for the customer. On the DoorDash app, you can request to have it hand-delivered or dropped off at your door, and this particular order wanted me to hand it to them. I waited for a second. I gave the door another polite but slightly louder knock compared to my first attempt. And almost right as I did that, I received a message from the customer, and they were politely asking if I could meet them around back to hand them their order. Right away, I got a horrible feeling about that, but I didn't know what else I could do. So I ended up doing the stupidest thing possible, and against my gut, I just texted him back and said, OK. I started walking towards the back, and it was even darker back there than it was in the front. I started to feel some adrenaline and some intense anxiety, so I decided to turn back around. Something made me turn around, it was like I didn't even have an option. It was so dark that I couldn't even see my own hand right in front of my face, so I got the hell out of there and did a light jog back to my car. As I was approaching my car, I heard a man from behind me in the backyard say, hey, wait, I'm right down here, come back. I didn't even turn around to look. I just got into my car and drove off. 
It's a good thing that I did because as I was leaving, I saw three more grown men run out of the bushes, and all of them were wearing masks. I couldn't even believe what was going on. It was a miracle that I decided to turn around when I did. Could you imagine what would have happened if I didn't, or if I would have stayed for even just another second? I more than likely wouldn't be here right now to tell this story. Of course, I called the police, and I even reported it to DoorDash. I was eager to hear all about what the cops had to say as I waited for days for them to get back with me. But deep down, I knew more than likely they were going to be gone by the time the police showed up, and I was right. And since I never got a good look at their faces and they were all wearing masks, I was screwed when it came to finding them. There weren't even any cars in the driveway either, so I pretty much had nothing to go off of. The only hope I had was DoorDash, DoorDash had to have one of their credit card numbers saved, right? Because how else would they have been able to place the order? Yeah, well, they weren't much of any help either. They pretty much told me to piss off when I asked for answers. That house was vacant, by the way, nobody lives there at all, and it's been that way for almost a decade. That explains why it was so dark and creepy looking. It would make for the perfect place to commit a crime like abducting a young girl like myself or just about anything else I can imagine. I still get goosebumps when I think back to this story. I hope this opens up anyone's eyes who needs to hear this because this type of thing can happen to anyone, anywhere, at any time. All you can do is be prepared, listen to your gut, and take my painful mistake as a hard life lesson like I had to. I work as a new breed driver at night to make a little extra cash. Friday and Saturday nights are always the busiest because everyone's either home or with friends and ordering food, so those were usually the nights I would work. I got a request on a Saturday night at 1 a.m. to pick up McDonald's for a guy named Harold. He lived a few minutes away from my current position, so I punched in the nearest McDonald's, which was like a two-minute drive away, and picked up his order. It was a small order, I think he only wanted two hamburgers. He lived like five to seven minutes away from the McDonald's. I followed the app's directions to the house and eventually it led me to a short dead-end street that veered off another dead-end street. The house was the last one on this dead-end road. It was right next to a line of trees that ran alongside a highway. Though it was pretty much dead at this hour given how late it was, I didn't want to ring the bell, so I called this Harold guy's number. It rang once then went to voicemail. So I hung up. Then I got a text from him, though he told me to come to the door, and so I did. I got to the big wooden front porch of the house and soon the front door opened. A bald guy opened the door and he didn't look very old. He looked to be in his thirties, yet his head was completely bald. Maybe he was sick or just liked that look, so I didn't judge. However, his breath was disgusting and he seemed to be quite drunk so that was a little off-putting. The payments were done through the app, so usually there was no need to wait around for money, but this time, this Harold guy asked me to come put the pizza on his kitchen table while he ran to fetch a tip. I didn't object to free money, so I waited in his kitchen, which, by the way, was only lit by a small outlet-sized nightlight, so it was pretty dim in there. The whole kitchen smelled rather disgusting, though I didn't know what it was. Harold was taking awfully long down in the basement fetching this tip, so I started to wander a bit. I stepped into the living room, which was adjacent to the kitchen. The TV was on in there, which was the only reason I could see anything. However, the stench was even greater in this room. Then I noticed that the back door was slid half open. Maybe he was airing out whatever that putrid odor was. For the hell of it, I walked to the back door expecting to get a quick breath of fresh air, but the smell only got worse. 
Finally, I stepped outside onto the man's back deck. I heard flies, the sound of a swarm of flies right by the door. Then I guess a motion sensing light saw my movement and turned on, revealing two big black garbage bags stuffed with two long objects. The smell was unbearable, it took me a second to catch on to what I was most likely looking at. Suddenly, waiting around for the tip didn't seem like a good idea anymore. I went back inside and rushed to the front door, and just then I heard Harold emerge from the basement calling to me. He was holding a few singles in his hand. He saw me as I was about to open the door and asked where I was going. I had to come up with something, so I said I was just rushing to check if I had something in my car. He said, oh, okay, as he came over to me and handed me the bills. Then he turned to the back door to the porch where the light was still on. Then he looked back at me with his gummy smile now disappearing. He asked me in a firm voice if I went to his backyard. I told him no, and he just stared at me, not saying anything. I didn't give any more thought to it. I opened the door and walked myself out, but not without him grabbing my shoulder as I got onto the stoop. I yanked his hand off my shoulder and ran to my car. I saw him run back inside with the front door still open. I turned my car on, sat, and watched his front door, curious to see if he'd come back out, and he did. He came back out running full speed for my car with a big metal rod in his hand. I drove away from his house, ready to call the police and report him. I called when I got down the block, making sure to leave him no time to dispose of those potentially dead bodies. I waited down the block and saw police cars pull up literally within two minutes. I watched the whole thing as I told the police where to go. In fact, Harold, if that's his real name, had already started moving the bags, which did contain dead bodies, to the bushes in his backyard. Everything about this guy was off. Leaving the back door open to reveal dead bodies to a pizza delivery boy may have been deranged, but he also wasn't the smartest man around. Thanks for watching the video. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to watch the latest videos.